everyone, nice to see you again for another video. Um, I'm actually starting a new sequel because I had an idea um, of a video tutorial series I wanted to make um, dealing with um, the Dr. Racket language, which actually is um, a scheme, and maybe you know that scheme is an outcome of Lisp, and I think. The reason why I want to do this is because I, I experience Scheme and this a very cool and powerful uh, programming language which are somehow different from every other programming language I actually know. And Dr. Scheme and now which be, uh, has become Dr. Racket uh, since a few years is a so powerful and uh, well-designed um, development environment it's not only aimed for building good software it's also aimed for teaching programming good software and more or less this is the same intention that Mr. Niklaus Wirt had as he designed Oberon this is also a language that is so cool and clear because it was aimed for teaching um, so more or less these are the same intentions and that's something that intrigues me. And um, I want to make a video, sequel, um, for this topic. But I want to make a approach that's a little different. Because normally um, when you're watching a video um, course about programming language, you start with, say, something that's um, uh, about the history. Where did this come from? Who invented this programming language? Who deal with it? and um, write your first hello world which is only suitable to um, give you the first programming experiences and an instant success and the hope that this instant success may fuel your motivation to get through the whole course and then you learn something about variables about data structures about arrays and you have a next level dealing with functions and procedures and coming to more complex data structures like records or structures like in C or Java. And maybe you get on to graphic programming and database programming and stuff like that. So a level of knowledge is built onto the top of the previous one. This is not bad. I think it's a very uh, straight ahead approach and it, it really works. But it takes a long time um, to get to stuff that's really interesting. I mean, who likes a boring hell world? This is actually a program that you, you can do nothing with it. It just displays hell world and um, after this moment of, of instant success feeling, this program is absolutely senseless. It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, my, idea, my idea is now... Um, I want to use examples that are a, bit, a little bit more complicated but also covering a lot of features, um, a lot of basics of the programming language scheme and I will explain the programming language all by the stuff that is contained in the example. I mean I will have an example that uh, draws a fractal for, example, for instance and in this example I can explain the conditionals, I can explain uh, what does a variable mean, what does a function mean in scheme, uh, what does recursion mean. Um, so instead of building layers of hierarchy one on another, I'm showing a little bit of this, I'm showing a little bit of that, I'm showing a little bit of that, and you're getting some kind of a holographic picture that becomes more and more uh, fine granular um, with every news um, video I make about this topic. I actually don't know if this will work. I never have done and never have tried something like this before. But um, I would like to give it a try. And maybe you can give me some kind of feedback by your by inserting comments on my video if this also works for you. Or maybe the outcome is it was a really bad idea and then I should stop it. But I think, hey, let's give it a try, okay? And now we
So, what is an evaluation? An evaluation in racket is something that um, occurs between two parentheses. I'm going to show you how this works now. So let's start this simple example here. You can see that the parentheses contain a lot of things. The first thing always is an operator that describes a function. In this case it is the function plus. That means things are added. Everything that comes behind this first thing are the parameter things. So the first thing defines what to do with all the other things coming behind. So this plus 4, 5, 6 gives 15 because the numbers 4, 5 and 6 are added together. It's as simple as that. In the next line you can see a nested evaluation. We have plus 1, 2, 3 and then the nested evaluation we've already seen here. And that gives 21. Why does it give 21? Because in the nested evaluation, the most inner evaluation is done first, plus 5, 4, 5, 6 gives 15, and you can replace the 15 for everything that is between these two parentheses, and you can write plus 1, 2, 3, 15, that also gives 21. So, evaluation is as simple as that. And what you can see here is how a function in racket is defined. First you have a keyword named define, then you have a name of a function that can be everything you want, also um, with uh, the use of special characters like hyphens, and then you have one or an endless list of parameters you can apply. And this specification is done between those two parentheses here. And then the function body is following, and in the function body you again have some kind of evaluation. In this case you add 1 to the parameter you are applying here. And when you call the function, you just call the name, add 1 to parameter, which is this one here, and you add your parameter you want to work with. And when the function evaluates, this parameter 1 is put in this place here, in this parameter, and is added to the static constant 1. And the result is 2 that is returned. And that's all about evaluation in Dr. Racket. Now something about conditionals. Conditionals are part of every programming language. They ask for something, and if this asking evaluates to true, then a code segment is executed, and when it's evaluated to false, another code segment is executed. This is the same what you find here. Here you can see a variable is defined. Define test one. That means specify a variable named test and set it to 1. What you can see here is an if clause. It starts with an if keyword after the first parenthesis. The second pair of parentheses specifies the conditional. Greater test 0 means is test greater than 0. If this evaluates to true, then the first following expression is evaluated. This is plus 1, 2. If this conditional evaluates to false, the second expression is evaluated. This is plus 2, 3. So if we start this, you can see the result is 3 because test is 1. So greater test 1 evaluates to true. That means that the first expression is evaluated plus 1, 2, that gives 3, and this result is returned, what you can read here. A more 
sophisticated structure for conditionals is the cond statement. You can see this here. You can see also that the variable test here is set to another value. This is done by the by the command set with this sign here behind it. This is always used when this variable already was specified by define. So you don't do another define, you use set. Set. Here set is uh, test is set to 3. The cont statement works like follows. First you have a cont keyword after the first open parenthesis and then you have multiple pairs of conditionals and expressions. And the rule is very simple. If this condition uh, evaluates to true, then the following expression is executed. If it's not the case, the system goes to the next line and to the next conditional. If this evaluates to true, then again this would be this expression would be evaluated. And the system goes down the list and if one expression evaluates to true, then this result is returned from the loop. <coughs> So it's very important always to provide an else for, because if no one of these expression here evaluates to true, then you always need um, a default fork that returns something. You can see this here by setting test to 3, and in every line the value of test is checked. Is test 1? No, test isn't 1. So this expression here is not executed. Is test 2? No, test isn't 2. So this expression here isn't evaluated. Is test 3? Yes, test 3. So the string test is 3 is executed and returned. This is what you can read here. Now something about local variables and loops. Let me start by explaining local variables. A local variable is defined by a statement that is named let, then an open parenthesis, and after that comes pair of parameter names and expressions or values that are assigned to those parameters. In this example, we have a parameter 1, which is assigned to the result of the expression plus 1, 2, which gives 3. And we have a parameter 2, which is directly assigned to a value named 2. After this specifying construct is closed, the body of the let statement begins. This is the part where you can do something with the parameters you're specified. And the parameters are only accessible inside this body of the let construct. Outside, these parameters are not visible and not accessible. Additionally, any parameter which is specified locally and has the same name as a parameter which is specified globally overrides its value temporarily as long as it is used in the local loop. After finishing the, the local construct, the parameter name will get back its originally global value. This is what you can see here. Let's start this. You can see we print out the parameter value by using command name printf, which works similarly as the one you know in the programming language C. At first we define parameter 1 as 10 and you can see here in the printout parameter 1 is global and 10. Now we enter the local let construct and we print out parameter 1. You can see parameter 1 is now local and 3 which is the result of this expression plus 1, 2. And parameter 2 is also local and 2. 
This is the main thing about local variables. Now let's come to loops. Loops are very similar in the structure um, to local variables because they also use a let statement. You see, we have an open parenthesis and again the keyword let and then a, named, a name like loop. This name is arbitrary. You can use any name you want here. Then some kind of specifying structure is opened, like you could see it here in the in the let statement above. Here you can specify variables as much as you want that you want to use in your in your loop. And you can see this construct here as some kind of function with a function name specified by this name and the parameter specified by the local parameters here. You will understand in a few seconds how this works. When we're entering the loop, we always need a condition that specifies when the end of the loop is reached and the loop has to be exited. This is very important because otherwise you get endless loops and a system hookup. So we use a cont statement. Cont ask if the variable we specified here run is zero. If it's zero, we evaluate the following expression, um, which result is returned coming out of this loop. In this case, you can see that um, the expression is just a name, named and starting with a quote. The quote sign always tells Dr. Rackett that the following string has not to be evaluated because it's just a symbol. So it's returned as it stands here. This is why we see the word AND uh, when the loop is terminated. In all other cases, which are processed here in the else fork, we just print out the value of the variable run and then we re-enter the loop by calling loop and using the run variable decorated by 1 as a parameter input for the loop statement here. So that means in the first run the variable run is 3, it's starting with 3, in the second run it is re-injected at this point with a value 2, and in the third run it's re-injected with a value of 1, and in the last run it becomes 0 and then the loop is terminated. This is what you can see here. Run variable is 3, 1, 2, and then end, which is the end of the loop.